Hi! Let's say you have a list of horizontally scrolling items and you want to highlight the centermost item whenever it crosses this area of interest like this. To achieve this effect, we're going to use the Intersection Observer. This video, we're going to take a look at what the Intersection Observer is and the different options it has that we can tune to achieve the exact effect we're looking for. To kick things off, I have a basic scaffolding in here with a container div within which we have a bunch of items numbered 1 through 5 and a CSS file with some basic styles for the body, some styles for the container giving it a max width, a display flex to make the items go horizontally, overflow scroll to make the list scrollable, we center it in the screen using margin zero auto and a gap of 10 pixels to control the spacing between the items. Then each item has a width and a height, a gray background color, flex shrink of zero to avoid the squishing of items, and we center everything inside using Flexbox. And lastly, we have a modifier focused class that we will use later on to add the light blue background color to the intersecting item. In here, I have linked this observer.js file that is going to house all the logic for our intersection observer. So an intersection observer is concerned with two things. The container of the items we want the intersection to happen in and the items that will be intersecting. So let's gather those components first. Let container equals document. Query selector the container div and the items will be the query selector all of the item class. To build an intersection observer, we're going to use the intersection observer constructor. Let observer equals new intersection observer that takes two options. First one is, an, is a callback that is called whenever the, there's new intersection information and the second is, is a bunch of options. Let's go back to the callback, it, which receives a bunch of entries, which is an array of objects bearing the intersection information. For now, let's just console log it. And the second argument is the options, which has three important properties, the first of which that we're going to take a look at is the root, which is the container within which the intersection is happening. In order for this observer to do anything, needs to observe some item that will be intersecting with the container. Let's say observer.observe and give it the first item for now. Let's save and let me go here. You can see that I have an array with one item because we are observing one item, we get an entries array with one item with some properties. The most important of which is this is intersecting, which is a Boolean true or false and the intersection ratio, which is a float varying between 0 and 1, meaning 0 to 100%. If I scroll this list, I get a new entries array with one item, of course, but this time we have the in is intersecting, which is false, and the intersection ratio, which is 0, because the item is completely hidden from view. If I scroll it back into view, we get a new intersection entry as expected with the in is intersecting as true. So now instead of saying observer that observes the first item, let's loop over all the items and make the observer observe them. So items for each item, observe the item. Now you can see that we have an array of five items with, the, with similar information as what we just saw. Basically the first three items are are intersecting and the last two are not. Now if we inspect this information up close, you can see that it has a target element, which is the, the item being observed. If I scroll all the way here, you can see that this item is the fourth item in our list. With this information in mind, I will go back here and instead of const logging the entries, I will loop over them. Entries for each entry let me console log the entry that target that text content. Now we get all the entries 
irrespective of their intersection status. But what if we want to only show the items that are intersecting? In this case, we will do an if check, if entry that is intersecting, then do the console log. Let me go here and refresh. You can see that we have one, two, and three, which are intersecting. Even though three is barely peaking at the viewport, it is intersecting, and the same thing would happen for four. In order to control how much of the item needs to be viewed before it is considered intersecting, we have the second option, which is threshold. If I say threshold, which varies between zero and 100%. So if I say that threshold is one, meaning 100%, can see that only one and two are intersecting for now. And if I want three to be intersected, I need to bring it all the way for it to show up. Now, instead of just console logging the entry, let's add something interesting to it, like the focused class that we saw earlier in the CSS. Class list, that toggle, the focused class. One neat trick we can use here is that the toggle method of class list takes a second parameter as a Boolean and enables us to conditionally add or remove that class. Let's give it the entry that is intersecting and delete the if check altogether. Now we can see that one or two are intersecting, one is gone, and now we have three, four and five, etc. But you can notice one problem with this implementation for now. We have, we have two items that are focused at the same time. But what if we want to only focus the centermost item, as we saw in the beginning of the video? For that, we're going to take a look at the third option for the intersection observer, which is the root margin, which functions as the margin you used to from CSS and enable us to determine with precision the area of interest for the intersection. Instead of considering that an item is intersecting while it is here, we can constrain the area of interest to only this, this part. And we say that this gray area on the fourth and second item are not accounted for. We're going to do some exact math for the intersection area, which will be the whole length of the container minus the length of one of the items and whatever is left and whatever is left should be divided equally on both sides. In here, we can set the root margin, which is a string, to zero pixels at the top and bottom, and minus root margin on the left and right. And let me go back here and do some calculations. So what we need is the container width, which is the container that offset width, and we need an item width. Item width, which is one of the items, let's say the first one, the first one's offset width. And the root margin will be the container width minus the item width divided by two. Let me save. Okay, I have an error. Root margin must be specified in pixels or percent. Yes, I need to specify the unit here as pixels. Save. Let me go back. And nothing is happening. Why? If you remember, we set the threshold, threshold earlier to 1 or 100%. And now we're doing some math that's leaving exactly the size of one item to intersect. You can get it to intersect with some very fine scrolling, like you see here, but that's not very practical, and we need to go back and change it to something like 50%, or a little bit over 50% to uh, prevent the problem of two items being selected at the same time. So let's say 0.53, let me save, and now we get one item selected at a time. But if I try to highlight the first item, I cannot scroll it all the way to the center. Same thing goes for the fifth item here, because we don't have any more space on the extremities. One possible way to solve this would be to add some left margin to the first item and some right margin to the fifth item. And the amount of margin we need to add would be exactly root margin, as it is 
the amount of space left from the intersection area to the edge of the container. So let me grab the first item and set its margin left. Margin left to root margin, pixels, and the same thing for the last item. Now I can bring the first item all the way back here and oh margin right not left. The first item is highlighted and the same thing goes for the fifth item. But if we reload the page we have this ugly looking margin left on the first item. To fix that we might adjust the scroll left property of the container to be exactly that margin so that the first item appears to be in place. Let me go here and say container, that's scroll left, equals root margin. And now if I reload the page, you can see that the first item is exactly on the left edge of the container. Now I can scroll all the way back here, select the fifth item, and go back to the first item, which is exactly the result that we took a look at at the beginning of the video. I hope you feel like you've learned something. If you liked the video, please give it a like and subscribe and see you in the next one.